But if you know a little bit about why we resist change, it's a lot easier to get to the how we can make change happen. So here are some of the reasons that we resist. The first one is just plain old biological hardwiring, right? We are, we're fight or flight driven. You know, as soon as we perceive something that's dangerous and our, our amygdalas of our brains, the most primitive part of our brain that is the least changed over centuries of development is our fear center. And when something is new, it can be danger or it can be simply perceived danger. That's how we're wired with negativity bias because as animals, as mammals, we don't have claws and we can't run like a cheetah. We've gotta be scanning the world for problems. And that comes up as negativity and results in that sort of fight flight or the other one that people forget is freeze mentality. So that's how we're wired. Change comes up in this part of us. It's that knee jerk resistance. Fear of the unknown. This is the biggest issue for your associates, whether they put their fingers on this or not. It's that sense of ambiguity, that uncertainty, that overwhelm. What's happening out there? We hear about change, but we don't know what that means. So there's this stirring of emotion sort of right under the surface of something's gonna happen and I can't quite put my finger on it. Well, welcome to the new age, right? The, the ambiguity is never going away. That is something we have to learn to embrace and believe it or not, get people excited about. That change means opportunity for massive growth. It's not a bad thing, it's an opportunity. Easy to say, hard to do, but that's the challenge of leadership. Another one is just a basic lack of understanding and communication. And you probably feel like you've been talking about change and what's happening and what might happen next forever. But when you've said it a thousand times, your associates have heard it one time. You cannot underestimate how often you need to repeat things. If, if you remember the old days when we had record albums, anybody? It's like a broken record. You say it so often until you think you can't say it again, and other people are just starting to internalize it. It's really that critical. And of course, connecting the benefit of the change to the change itself. So people don't feel like, here we go again, we're another change, we're doing it again. You've gotta connect the dots for them so that they see where the change is meant to take them and why this particular change is different from another one or the last one. And then beyond that is to paint that picture of the future that people really can embrace and get excited about.